on that first drill program. But what we noticed um, was that every single drill hole that we drilled on those new claims encountered lithium mineralization. Well, hello there, my friends. Chris Marcus here with you for Arcadia Economics and excited to catch up with my friend Andrew Pollard of BlackRock Silver, who has been quite busy in the past couple months and a lot of developments been going on with BlackRock, which we'll dig into and get another update from Andrew today. And before we start, though, Andrew, it's great to see you again, as always. I know you've had a lot going on. How's everything going with you today? Yeah, no, it's great. It's been too long since I've been on here, but uh, we've got a fair bit to talk about. So looking forward to uh, bringing you up to speed. Well, I'm looking forward to that as well. And I thought the first place we would start, you had some news out recently. Um, and for people who may have missed it, you found some lithium mineralization at your Tonopah North project. And you have formed a deal with Tierlock Resources, which it's nice uh, you have them paying for the development and drilling there, and you guys are about to get started with that drilling. So perhaps you could walk people through how that came about and what's going on there. Yeah, well, you, you know, when we picked up our, our land holdings in the Tonopah Silver District, I guess nearly three years ago, we acquired um, uh, about five square kilometers of patented claims, so private land down there, which the uh, was the extension of the Tonopah Silver District. And we really had first mover status down there at the time. So early on, we wanted to expand our land holdings, um, uh, grabbing as much ground as we possibly could have. So we went and staked about 20 square kilometers directly abutting our project to the north of our land holdings in Tonopah, thinking that the silver gold mineralization um, had a good potential to carry up uh, to that northern portion of the property. And and um, we did that. We staked that ground and we, we set out about um, doing a scout exploration program on those new claims early last summer um targeting for gold and silver mineralization you know buried deep and blind undercover targets now we didn't hit any silver or gold uh, uh, uh on that first drill program but what we noticed um, was that every single drill hole that we drilled on those new claims encountered lithium mineralization effectively starting right at surface uh with a very very good looking grade profile and we followed up on those uh, uh, those initial lithium um, uh, discoveries by, by by doing a very small targeted drill program after that, trying to get a handle on where the high grade was. And in October of last year, we announced the last batch of results from that um, initial drilling program. And and every single one of those results uh, came in line. We, we were targeting, we were in search of which way the high grade was running. And, and we it looks like we got a handle on that. So we put those results out. We had results up to 1200 PPM uh, lithium. Um, and right after that, we had lithium companies beating down our door to try and do deals on that property. So we waited, we fielded a lot of different offers and we ended up signing with Tierlac Resources who um, agreed to come in. Effectively, the deal um, allows them to ex just explore for uh, the top 200 meters of surface rights there. Uh, exploring for lithium mineralization, and they're to spend $15 million US, so one five million US over the next five years and deliver a feasibility study on it, uh, uh, which will see them earning a 70% interest in that project, meaning we don't have to do anything, um, uh, 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 but, you know, Tierlac will be bringing their lithium expertise to drill it out. And that last announcement you referenced, um, that's announcing that they've started drilling already. So we signed a deal with them in January and they've got drills already down at the site, um, uh, starting off on a 3000 meter drill campaign um, in an effort to quickly put out a ma maiden mineral resource estimate on that project, um, probably by Q1 of next year. So they're gonna be very aggressive. Now, why are they being very aggressive? Um, you know, Tonopah, the lithium discovery wasn't really accidental. We knew there was a good chance we'd have drilled into some, um, just given the proximity to our next door neighbors project, um, uh, which is a company called American Lithium. And American Lithium just put out um, a PEA on their project. It's called the TLC deposit. It's Tonopah Lithium Claims. Their PEA outlined uh, a $5 billion after-tax NPV project uh, with a 37% IRR. Effectively, it's projected to be one of the lowest cost lithium operations on the planet. 
and we've we're right next door to them and we're drilling mineralization very very similar to them this has the potential to be very 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 big um and so you know our partners really not wasting any time and driving our project forward um you know, not only are they going to be drilling it, but they're doing concurrent metallurgical studies. So they're going to be doing a big bulk sample in Q2 as well from this big outcropping rock they've identified there, which they think should have should have um, some very good lithium in it. Um, and that's going to allow them to push forward quickly with pilot plant design. So these guys aren't wasting any time. Um, and, and I think they're going to um, uh, move very quickly. You know, that five years they have to spend that um, initial um, uh, earn in contribution. I think they're going to do that a hell of a lot quicker based on what they're, they're talking about. Um, you know, if you look at the lithium deposit, uh, holistically, um, uh, in relation to our, our portfolio down there, it's actually positioning BlackRock as a very, very unique story within the, the green metal space, because not only do we have in Tonopah West, one of the highest grade undeveloped silver projects in the entire world right now, but it's right at the crossroads where you've got the silver district that runs east west, and then you've got this lithium district, which runs north northwest. They're 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 intersecting right where our project meets. So we've got the intersection of this massive high grade lithium belt with this massive, very famous silver camp, um, and we're the donut hole in the middle where those two meet. So um, you know, not only are we tied to what I I see as being the most oversold commodity in the world right now, being silver. And with with a, a gold as a pretty good byproduct down there in Tonopah. But we've now got exposure to a project that's going to quickly advance uh, in the lithium space, which so is pushing us through, you know, pushing through all time highs and, and garnering a lot of um, uh, investor attention these days. And, you know, you're starting to see headlines come up more and more about car manufacturers and battery manufacturers trying to get a handle on um, their own supply, on, the, on their own supply chains. You know, Tesla right now is being rumored to buy a, a lithium company in Brazil. General Motors just did a $650 million investment into another Nevada lithium company. And here we are with this lithium high-grade gold and silver resource in the ground, um, this emerging lithium discovery right next door. And we're right in the heart of West Central Nevada, off a highway. Um, I mean, you can't get a better setup than that. I mean, we're in the right jurisdiction. We've got private land too, which, you know, sees the potential for both our silver and lithium projects to advance at, at, at ridiculous speeds, just because you're shaving off per, per, um, uh, uh, permitting, um, not having to deal with the federal government. Um, so I think this is going to be a very exciting year for us as we drill out our Tonopah West silver discovery keep trying to add ounces for a next resource update there um, and have tier lack advance or lithium discovery on the doorsteps of a $5 billion deposit right next door. So. Yeah. And I think one of the nice things about the way you structured the deal is that you have someone with lithium experience going in, doing the lithium side and also allows you to continue what you've been doing in terms of the gold and silver. And that's another thing I wanted to ask you about. I know you've been expanding your resource area up there to the west. Right. You've been doing some step out drilling and yeah. finding some nice results. And perhaps you could talk about that a little bit. Yeah. So our, our maiden resource estimate that we put out, uh, I think, at the end of April last year, that really just covered uh, those two uh, green polygons you see in the center of your screen there. One was the Victor deposit on the... Uh, northeastern side, and then in the center of our um, uh, uh, Tonopah West projects, the DPB area. Those two areas, we wanted to tie those up with a you know pretty little bow. Those two areas represented the two areas where the old timers were were either mining or preparing to mine, but did, never got around to it because metals prices tanked in the late 1920s and sent um, uh, the company that had those claims at the time into bankruptcy. So what we want to do is we didn't reinvent the wheel just went back into those two areas the old timers had already scoped out and were preparing to mine just never got around to pulling out uh the ore so we drilled those out uh our first resource really only accounted for about a year and a half's worth of drilling and then last year after we put the resource out we focused our sites on step up potential new discoveries at the project that could add significant new tons beyond where the the old timers even um knew were possible and that's where we hit a series of um a good intersects to the northwest there, about 1.6 kilometers beyond where our maiden resource left off. 
It looks to be the extension of that very same system. It's just on the other side of this big fault, uh, which came and cut, uh, I guess, offset everything. So our last set of drill results we announced in January from there, uh, uh, we finally got multiple pierce points into the structure. It's running, uh, it's oriented slightly different than the rest of the deposit down there. So it took a little feeling out with the drill bit, but we finally got it. And we've got a structure up there now, which uh, looks to be quite large. It's got um, uh, serious expansion potential in all directions. And we've hit multiple, you know, we, uh, we, we announced a 4.3 meter intersect uh, with grades up to 800 grams per ton in one of those. And that lines up with another intercept um, uh, that we had, which uh, had up to 700 grams in there. So we now know which way that structure is running. And our, our program for this year is going to be really just uh, following that same structure that we've got a handle on and just drilling out some strike length, which should add some a whole bunch of new tons for um, a, a, resource a resource update once we can get the drilling done we need to there. But we've got some serious expansion potential there too. So we know, you know, the silver district, uh, our, our silver holdings there look good. We're backstopped by, you know, some of the highest grade ounces in the ground in the entire industry right now of, of undeveloped projects. Um, we've made a new discovery showing some, some big upside potential to the Northwest. Uh, we also made a really, really high grade discovery. In fact, our highest grade discovery at the project is just south of the resource area in the DPB uh, zone, um, where we hit 6.5 kilograms silver equivalent down there near surface, um, uh, which we're going to be drilling out um, over the summer too. And that, that had over 37, 37 grams per ton gold and over well over two kilos pure silver in that intercept. And that's a completely different system too, we think. So uh, we've got a lot of new, we, we made, I guess, two consequential new discoveries at the project last year, which we're now going to be picking up uh, from where we left off once we get the drill back there. Um, but we've got some very low hanging fruit there. So, you know, lots of drill results. Um, you know, the drill just started turning on the lithium stuff last week. Uh, I'd expect we'll have some drill results back from that as early as, you know, mid-March, I'm thinking. And then a lot of drill results following there um, through through summer. Um, and then on our silver projects, uh, we're just in the process of trying to line up drillers to pick up where we left off last year and really follow up drilling out that that big step out hole that we hit on and uh, and just following that structure now that we got a handle on it. Yeah, well, there's definitely been a lot going on, obviously, in addition to the lithium and that you had your resource out last year in April and have been expanding since then. And also, uh, I would be remiss if I did not bring up that you've had some results coming out at Silver Cloud as well. So uh, perhaps you could touch on those as well. Silver Cloud. Uh... Well, it was a pretty wild discovery from our from our part. Uh, the story goes there. The Silver Cloud is 45 square kilometers um, right next door to the Hollister mine and right on trend of the Midas mine, about 15 kilometers away from Midas. Hollister and Midas are two of the highest grade gold mines in Nevada. And Silver Cloud, for, for, for various reasons, represents a, a massive land holding on trend of both of these high grade projects that's just been wildly underexplored given the prospectivity that we know is up there. And um, when we picked Tonopah up in 2020, Silver Cloud was our only other project. It's the reason why I joined the company originally, first as an investor and then a CEO. Um, I knew it had prospectivity potential. We knew it had high grade potential, but once we got our hands on Tonopah, that became the flagship because we hit on the first drill hole there. With, you know, Having a very, very high grade silver primary deposit um, is very rare. So we rode that really, really, really hard. And Silver Cloud sort of became the, the ugly duckling. We just didn't have any mandate to do much there. But we owed the vendor of the projects three holes. We had to, we had to do about, uh, we owed him 1500 meters of drilling to fulfill our obligations under the lease that we have with the project. So you know, we had to do a three-hole campaign last summer. Um, uh, otherwise, we would have owed the vendor money. So we decided to put that money in the ground. Better to spend it on the drill bit than, than going to someone's pocket. And we thought that maybe, you know, if we don't hit there, you know, we won't really have a mandate to keep the project. We probably just have to drop it. So we, we, we drilled three holes, 1,500 meters. Very challenging exploration. Unlike Tonopah, which is a, a brownfields, you know, past-producing you know, project that we had where we had lots of data to work with up at Silver Cloud. 
you know, it's, it's blind discovery all over it. So we, we, we did three drill holes. You don't really expect to hit when you're targeting veins blind and buried, you know, hundreds of meters below earth with nothing, you know, at surface to guide you. But we did, we hit on one of the drill holes and it's one of the best drill holes we've ever drilled as a company. We drilled a meter and a half, which is exactly what we knew we'd always be targeting up there because that's how thick the veins are at Midas. Um, and this looks to be very Midas style mineralization. But we didn't hit 30 grams, which Midas is known for. Uh, um, we hit 70 grams gold and 600 grams per ton silver. And what that does is that completely unlocks our understanding up there because it lines up with another drill intercept that our chairman of our, our company made 20 years ago when he had this project when he was running Placer Dome. So, you know, the secret sauce, you know, discovery isn't really made on these vein de deposits when you just hit mineralization. It's made when you can figure out which direction things are going and how big is it. And that's the secret sauce here. We pin the tail on the donkey with this with this um, second drill hole of a three drill hole campaign that we did up there. And we've now got a structure tracked over 425 meters. It's very Midas style in terms of mineralization. It's in the same sort of looking rock package that the Midas mine was known for. Big volcanic, thick rock package, same vein widths. And we hit double double the mineralization, double the grades that, that they were known for. So that has, a, at the grades like that, um, you know, high grade tons pile up very, very quickly. And, you know, what's interesting about Silver Cloud is, well, you know, Hollister and Midas, the two, the, the, the two projects were, you know, the donut hole in the middle of there, those are owned by Hecla. We've got two mills on care and maintenance jogging distance from our discovery. Um, First Majestic Silver, who's also, you know, come into multiple financings for us, they own the Jarrett Canyon mine, which is just northeast of us, not that far. That's also, you know, a good, that, that's a, a that, that's a good jog too. Um, you know, that discovery up there makes our project have a whole lot more luster than it did, because not only do we have, you know, one of the highest grade silver uh, discoveries in the world right now down in Tonopah with expansion potential. Not only do we have this lithium uh, intersection there between these two mineral belts, which is going to be advanced very quickly, but we've now got this, this very ben high grade bonanza discovery up in Northern Nevada, right on the doorsteps of two of, you know, the largest silver producers in the world and the barometer to see that project move forward you know you wouldn't have to build anything up there right you, you know you've got the mills already bought and built you've got two companies with underground mining fleets already up there at the ready we just have to show a bit of a bit of um exploration potential which we've just done and we're going to be hitting that with the drill rigs um hopefully uh, uh getting back up there some point in q2 uh just laying into this 425 meter structure and hopefully hitting some more bonanza grade drill holes up there so so from a portfolio standpoint, you know, this time last year, we only really had one bona fide project, which was Tonopah. We had zero ounces del delivered at that point. So we had zero ounces in the ground at Tonopah, zero expansion potential at Tonopah. The lithium discovery was, you know, no one even knew about that at the time. And the silver cloud discovery, which we just announced in December. I mean, you know, we were thinking we'd probably have dropped the project. Now we've got three projects, three discoveries, all standalone potential but together as uh, as a portfolio my goodness like this is a very exciting portfolio we've got uh we've got three different ways to win not only you know if, if lithium continues to run and so silver and gold pick up well we should see some nice movement there but you know we've got three discoveries all which are going to be moving forward one of which is fully bought and paid for by a partner and the others you know we're going to be getting back up and and we've got our our team of geologists who have now made three discoveries in three years, um, very eager to, to follow up on this high grade stuff. So uh, I think we're going to have a very exciting spring and summer here. Yeah, it's certainly been a productive couple of months and nice that you've made so much progress in a short period of time. Like you said, last year, you were just getting the resource estimate out and now finding the mineralization at silver cloud, plus having partner go do the lithium leg work for you. So Will right. be exciting. Uh, will be an exciting year for you guys, and looking forward to following along with that. Andrew, before we wrap up, could you just let folks know if they have questions on any of the projects, want to get in touch? Uh, what is the best way to reach you? 
Yeah, no, shoot me an email, uh, Andrew at BlackRockSilver.com, and uh, I'm happy to respond to everyone. Um, you know, as I said, drills are turning on our lithium stuff now, so we'll have results probably some point in uh, by mid to uh, late March, uh, and then you know regularly thereafter. And then on the, our silver and gold projects, we'll be laying out some programs very quickly here uh, with an aim to getting the drills turning, some point in Q2, uh, hopefully on both. So um, yeah, stay tuned, but uh, we've got some catalysts, very, very short-term catalysts to look forward to here now, so. Well, Andrew, appreciate the update. Congratulations on all the success you guys are experiencing. People can find out more at blackrocksilver.com and we'll look forward to seeing how the drill results start coming out next month. There you go. Cheers. Stay tuned. And um, yeah, should be exciting, right?